Have you ever wanted to create a bot that can recommend movies, books, or maybe products that your business sells? These recommendations would be based on a movie that you already liked, or maybe a product that your customer purchased. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, Google does that. But what if it's your data that's not on Google, or your customer's data, also not on Google? Well, if this is something you want to know how to do and have no coding experience, then you're in the right place. It turns out embedding is a tool that can allow you to do this. And I'm going to show you step by step how to make a bot like this one that will give you recommendations based on a movie you tell it you enjoy. I'll explain how it works and show you exactly how to make one yourself, assuming you have no previous coding experience. At the end, you'll have a bot that you can share with your friends just by sending them a link. The best part is the data in this example is just in Excel, so you can swap it out for your own data and use the bot the same way. Embedding is a pretty powerful tool, and this example should give you the basics to get you started with using AI to interface and organize your data. So at a high level, what is embedding? Essentially, you're assigning a vector or a number to each of your words and groups of words in your data based on meaning and context. For this example, the way we're gonna do that is using OpenAI's embedding program. OpenAI's embedding program will read your words and groups of words and compare it to their library of training that has an understanding of context and sentiment. From this, they can assign a number to your data known as a vector label. This vector label will be based on how close your word is to other words in their training data. What's interesting about this is that the numbers that are close together are more closely related. Similarly, the numbers further apart are less related. So as a quick example, when you search the word dog, that vector label is going to be nearby other words associated with dog. Words like fur, treat, bowl will all be close by, but words that would be far away would be words not often associated with dog, like earthquake, Rubik's cube, Lex Friedman, or robot, random words you wouldn't often use with the word dog. Each word has a number or a vector label assigned to it. You can then calculate how far away each number is from the word dog by using a formula called cosine similarity. You don't need to understand this formula, but it will tell you the distance between two words for how similar they are. Once you have a list of similarities or distances from one another for each of the words back to the word dog, you can list them in order. So if we put the highest number first, the word that ranks most similar to the word dog would be fur. Then you'd probably have treat, then bull, then robot, since we have robot dogs, then probably Lex Friedman, since he's often talking about robot dogs, then earthquake, and finally Rubik's Cube at the bottom, since most do not associate a Rubik's Cube with dogs. Embedding is helpful when you have data that is raw and unlabeled, with no association or sentiment and context assigned. You can run this data through OpenAI's embedding labeling program, and it will compare the words and sentences with OpenAI's existing training, and then label your words and sentences, giving them numerical context and sentiment. This context and sentiment can then be compared to words that are not in your data set. This is different from fine tuning, where you're using OpenAI's model that is already trained and feeding it additional data to help make it an expert in a specific topic. This is adding to the training that OpenAI has already performed on its existing models. Embedding, on the other hand, is taking the raw data and using OpenAI's training to assign vector numbers to give your data context and meaning. But you're not using their existing training model to access your data. You will literally get a file at the end of this with a column of vector labels that OpenAI's program has assigned to your data. We'll see this in our example. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we need is data on movies. Now, I got my data from a website called Kaggle.com. They have a bunch of data sets that you can use. The data that I received was pretty big. I had a lot of information. I ended up merging it down to a column that I labeled movie ID, uh, and then just numbered each one, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down. And then the second column I labeled movie and just put the movie title, the year it came out, and then the description of the plot all in the same column. So you can see here, this first one here is Avatar, 2009 and then a description of the plot. So this will be the data that we assign embedding vector labels to into this column next to it. Once you've got your data cleaned up, then we need to save the file. So we'll go to file save as and I'm going to save mine as large underscore movie data and you need to make sure you change the file format to a CSV UTF-8. This is really important or the Python code won't be able to read it. Once we've done that, we'll open up a new Google Colab notebook. So you go to colab.research.google.com uh, and it'll pull up this here and we'll do a new notebook. The first thing we're going to do is move the CSV file that we just saved into our Colab notebook here. So you want to make sure and link your Google Drive, connect to Google Drive, and you'll see your Google Drive actually pops up. Within my drive, I have a folder here called Movie Rec, 
And this is where I'm gonna actually save the Excel CSV file that we just created with all my data in it. So to save it into the notebook, you actually just drag your file and drop it into the folder that you wanna save it into. Uh, you'll get this warning and just say, okay. And now you have your data in your Google Colab session window here. Next, we need to install the programs that we're gonna use in our code today. To do this, we just do exclamation point pip install and we're going to use pandas OpenAI, and gradio which will give us a cool user interface that we can interact with our code and share with our friends once we've done that you can just hit this plus code button and create a second line of code now we're going to import the programs that we're using here so just do import pandas as pd so we're relabeling pandas as the variable pd in our code next we'll import OpenAI, and then we'll do import numpy and this just allows us to do calculations with arrays of numbers which is something we're going to be doing in this program and again we'll do that as np so we're labeling it as a variable np and then import gradio as gr next we're going to import pickle and this is just a python program that will allow us to save our data as a file type that python is able to do very precise calculations with on very large numbers you don't really need to understand that but you need it in the program next we're going to do from sklearn metrics.pairwise and then we're going to import cosine similarity so this cosine similarity is the formula that's going to compare our input word against the other training data and see how close our vector labels are to one another to find similar words and then from openai.embeddings utils import get embeddings and this is openai's program which will actually read our data and then assign the vector label numbers against all of their training data so once you've done that you can then do plus code now we need to import our openai key and if you don't know where your OpenAI API key is, I have a video about how to do that. It's pretty simple, but uh, I won't go into how to find that here. But we'll do openai.api underscore key and then equals in single parentheses, put your API key in. I'm going to collapse this so we can see everything better. All right. And then we'll do a new line of code. Now we're going to put code to actually read our CSV file into our program. So we have it in our folder, but we need to actually bring it then into our code. So to do that, we'll do DF equals PD, which is the pandas program that we pulled in, read underscore CSV, and then in parentheses and single quotes, you just need to put the file path where we stored our CSV file. So if you go over here, one thing not to trip up on, it's actually inside the content folder. So this is the location of my CSV file. So I'll just do back backslash contents, backslash drive, backslash my drive, backslash movie underscore rec, backslash my file name, large movie data dot CSV. So now that we're here, we can start to run the program and we'll actually then hit this play button and it will load all of these programs into our code, installing them. All right, once that's complete, then just go down to the next line and we'll import them into our code. Then we'll run the API key and link our OpenAI account here. And then we'll read the Excel file into our code, so run that. And that will bring our Excel data then into our program. Now we're ready to actually embed the data that we have in our Excel file. So to do that, we'll add another line and we'll do DF, which is data frame. And I'm gonna call the column that it's going to create with our vector labels embedding. And then do equals data frame. It's gonna pull this from the movie column in our data. Apply Lambda X get embedding and then x engine and this is where we actually define which open ai model we want to embed our data similar to fine tuning they have more advanced models that cost a little more uh, for this one we're going to use just the basic model to access that you can go to openai.com backslash pricing if you scroll down you can in the embedding models it will show you how much each model costs per thousand tokens so i'm going to use the ada version 2 which is 0040004 cents per thousand tokens so we do engine equals and then i'm doing text embedding hyphen ada-002 because i'm using the ada version 2. Uh, this lambda function is actually going to tell our program to go line by line and apply this get embedding so it's going to walk down each of the movie titles and find the vector label for each line and then go to the next one. And then it's creating this embedding column where it's going to store that value that it finds from OpenAI's program. We only need to do this one time. So once OpenAI assigns the vector label to all of our data, we don't need to reload that every time we want to use our program. We can just save that file in our code or as a separate file even. So this is where we're going to use the pickle program, which is a Python file type that allows us to use big numbers and keep the resolution of very large numbers. So to save this, it's actually going to create a dot 
.pkl or .pickle file uh, in our drive here. So to do that, we'll do with open and then parentheses, and then we're gonna tell it where we want it to save our pickle file at. So I'm actually just gonna have it save in the same folder that our Excel data is in, but I need to change it to a .plk file. So now it's gonna save our data with the embedding data as a plk file in the same location as our Excel data. And do with wb as f. We'll drop down a line and do pickle dot dump data frame and f. All right, so this line here is actually the heart of our code here. This is gonna actually run the OpenAI embedding program and assign our vector labels. This can take a while to run, so I'm just gonna click this and we'll come back once it finishes. Few moments later. All right, and that's complete. Uh, it looks like it took uh, 12 minutes. When I checked my API billing, it ended up costing nine cents. So it costs nine cents to assign the vector labels running this embedding program. Now that we've got that, we can actually look in our Google Drive and you'll see here it pops up with our large movie data dot pickle file right here. You can't actually open that and view it outside of our code. If you wanna see it, we can add a line here to actually save it as a CSV so we can look at it. This isn't necessary to run the program, but if you're curious and just wanna see what these vector numbers look like against your data, uh, I'll show you how to do that. To do that, we'll do df data frame equals pd read underscore pickle. And then I just need to tell it where our pickle file is, which we saved right here. So I'm gonna copy that, put it in, make sure it's in, in single quotation. And then we'll tell it data frame two underscore CSV, and then where we wanted to save this file. So I'm gonna put it in the same folder, but we already have an ex a CSV file named that. So I'm gonna do underscore embed dot CSV. And again, make sure it's in single quotations and then run that. And you'll see once it completes, it will actually add a CSV file then into our folder here. And we can look at the vector number labels that it assigned to each of our movie data. So I'll download that, take a look just to show you. Okay, that downloaded. Again, this is just to look at the vector label numbers. You don't need this to get the program to run. So yeah, this is, uh, this is what OpenAI's program has done. So it's added this embedding column, and then these are the vector labels that are associated with this long description and all these words. Each word and pair of words has been assigned these vector label numbers that then our cosine similarity function is later gonna take when it's trying to find recommendations. Uh, but anyway, so you can close that. Now what we need to do is load our pickle file back into our code session now. So we have it saved, but we need to load it back in. So to do that, we're gonna do a new line and just say with open and then the location of our pickle file which again is right here and we'll do rb as f and then data frame equals pickle and load and then you can run that all right so now we have our pickle file loaded into our code session here now we're going to actually create the search function in our code that will take our input movie and search against our pickle file here and come up with a search result based on that so to do that we'll do define search underscore movies. Uh, we'll have it search within the data frame. We'll call it movie title. And we're going to do n equals two because we want it to actually return the second result. The first result will just be the movie that we're searching. So it's going to find the most similar match to be the actual movie that we put in if it's in our list. So we want it to return the second result as a recommendation to the movie that we're asking it for. So we'll do, we'll call it embedding equals, and then we'll have it use the get embedding function from OpenAI, and then movie title engine equals. So this is where we'll use the text embedding ADA002, uh, the same one that we use to assign our vector labels to our data. We'll use that same engine to assign our vector label to our input movie. Okay, so once it finds that, then we'll have it create a data frame called similarities, and that will be based on the embedding data frame that's in our data, and we'll apply lambda function again so that it goes line by line through each of the movies and compares it to the vector label that it found for our input. And the way it's going to compare that is using the cosine similarity. Again, the cosine similarity is comparing two vector label numbers and finding the distance between them. 
and we'll do embedding. And then the result of that will be a data frame that sorts the values based on similarities. And we want it to be descending so that the closest match is at the top. So ascending is false. And then we'll do dot head. And so then that will return the result of the, so again, we're doing the second location. The way these work is zero here would be the first location, but we want the second location. So we're gonna do one and then we'll have it report the movie column based on the result of the location of the, and then we'll also have it report the result of the similarity of our search term to what it's recommending for us. So we can see actually the, the cosine similarity distance that it solved for. Cool. So now you can run that. Uh, and then now we'll pull in the Gradio interface so that we can actually interact and put our favorite movie in and have it a recommendation in from our data. So we'll define Radio Wrapper, and it's gonna go by movie title, and we'll say top movie similarity score equals, we'll do DF data frame movie title. And we'll have it return the top movie and the similarity score. Then we need the Gradio interface that I'm just going to paste from separate code here. But basically, this is just pulling in the Gradio user interface. It's going to use our Gradio wrapper. The input here is text. So we're going to put the movie that is our favorite movie as the input. And then the output is going to be the movie it recommends, which is text. And then the number, which is the cosine similarity number that it found for how close the result is to our favorite movie. Um, and then if you set this share to true, it will actually give you a link then that you can share with your friends and family. So we'll run that. And now we've got our Gradio interface here. So you can actually put in your, your favorite movie here and it should output a recommendation from our data set. So it's thinking and Escape from Planet Earth 2013. All right, okay, I'll have to check that out. I've not seen that. So that's a good one. Let's try uh, Ex Machina and it recommends Lucy. Okay, and again, this number here is how similar the result is to our movie that we're putting in. But yeah, play with it. Um, again, you can change the data in the Excel sheet and then use this as a search function. Uh, if you change this N to one, it will give you the top result. And then you change this to the one to a zero. We can rerun it and it will actually find then the top result from the data. So if I do ex machina, it actually returns ex machina. That's kind of how that works. So again, set this to two and then make this a one and a one. But that's how you embed data from an Excel sheet using OpenAI's embedding program. Have fun with it. Hope you guys learned something. If you want to learn more cool AI tools, make sure you subscribe. Thanks.